this pressure mounting. Finally, they cross with a spike. Shorty in hand. Buzz catches Aspas for the flood in the side. RP! He's just stunned up. A DRX hold on again. <laughs> it's so difficult. Valorant Esports is goated, and yesterday's games at Champs proved it. And we're going to take a look today at DRX versus Loud here on Ascent, where there was some truly bizarre rounds. And let's just start here with the first round, the pistol round. Loud are on attack. They're playing a very weird comp. They're against DRX, and what we're going to see uh, at the very start of this round is quite normal, actually. Uh, it seems to be a, a very popular idea, where DRX have just gone for this Kildra setup on A, and they're actually going to play for a kind of a passive, sort of just full retake on A, and Loud are just going to go to the A site, as you can kind of tell by the map. DRX tried to go for this trap play here setup with a Kale Flash, and then try and peek ahead of this wall, but no one's there, as we know, but Loud are going to make it on to the A site. I, I don't know. I, I'm not entirely sure. It feels like another attempt really to put Aspas in a position to succeed here for Loud. Wide open A site, start things off. Not much chip damage done. No. DRX respecting this initially. Oh, shot guy, actually, yeah. Sadak up to 36. Now, why is this idea of playing for a, a retake here on a pistol round, why has that become a popular idea in these rounds? Well, the thing is, there's only limited utility in these rounds. So each bit of utility you can save and use in a, in a good way uh, becomes more valuable in a pistol round because there's going to be less response, particularly if a team uses a lot of utility to take a site. But the thing is, Loud know that this A retake has become somewhat common. So actually, they've still got quite a bit of their utility here to play in this post plant where they've still got their own flash, two breach flashes. You just saw the aftershock get used. You just saw the prowler and the and the Caesar's still available as well there. The only problem is some of their players are a bit low, but what you're about to see is we've got less here in a great little lurk position. He's going to manage to find two kills before eventually getting traded. And then things are just going to get very, very weird. And I'm just going to let it play out and speak for itself because what happens next is kind of wild. Find the open plant. Oh. Oh, delivers so and this so lurk clean. tucked into short. So very clean. Does go down in the end to Marco, but look at the post plot. It's it's all tucked towards like under sight. Very, very dedicated towards this. And the HP is pretty low. Kaunzine, Sadak, all low. Aspas sitting pretty, but the rest suffering a little here. Not gonna come through. Dealt with immediately. You're right, so I know we'll find a steady footing just yet. They got Time ticking blood. away. They, they, they haven't got a kill just yet. They need to get a... Hang on. Oh, what? Oh, he's found three. And now it's down just two. He's, and he's kept back by the smoke. Oh, he got a classic. Oh, he's so low. Oh, 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 no way. No way. <laughs> Can you believe it? Terry's <laughs> finally finds a knife, but it's too late. The defuse comes through. So that's how the game started. But now let's come to round number eight, which is another truly bizarre and crazy round for multiple reasons. Uh, but let's just start off. Uh, there isn't too much to really analyze in this one. It's just crazy. Uh, where Loud are just going to go for pretty much a straight A hit. We've got the two players here on the A side from DRX, which was a common thing. They actually played Killjoy on A quite often, or a lot more uh, than you would in most games at least. And they would end up in this kind of setup where they've got both RB and Mako here on A together uh, holding this down. In this instance, what's about to happen is they're about to get fade ulted, as you see just there. And so in goes Aspas with the dash just here. We get a Prowler coming out. Obviously, we've got this Nano one we're going to get a smoke in here from Mako as well but we end up in this spot and you're like okay you know we got the aftershock a nice flash coming out here from Mako to uh, blind everyone but Mako's about to do something which is completely crazy he's going to ult and you might think oh yeah he's just going to ult off site or whatever right just get out of that situation no he's going to ult on top of this box down here so he's going to go from here across here and it's going to work loud have no idea in the chaos of all the situation it works but then something even more crazy is going to happen, and I'm just going to let you watch the rest of the round because it truly is a bizarre round. And now Marco and RB trying to stand up to the task here. Lots of pressure their way. Beautiful reveal. Aspas goes down, punished by Cess. Marco! That TP was unbelievable. What? what on earth? The spray connects perfectly. Punishes three, but now look at this 1v1. Door shot, but he gets ahead of it here. He's playing with expectations and timing, but he's 21 HP. He used to make use of this time, though. Buzz still looking towards A-site. Now the penny has dropped. The less does have the pit. He can secure this plant perfectly on B-site. 
notoriously difficult. And if Buzz doesn't swap out this operator, it become even more problematic. But for Buzz to swap it out, he's got to go quite far. Yeah. He, he'd have to have gone towards the site. So now he's working back in with an operator to hand, no knife. What's the secondary? Let's find out. He's 21 HP. Unless he hits. You're almost looking towards him using the secondary. Shot in the dark. Shot oh. in the dark. Okay, the, the shorty tool. comes out. Hold on, Les is 21 HP. Buzz has a shorty, and they're closing in. Oh, Les got him! What a round from Les. The Red Bull clutch coming out big. I want to see that spray again. Show me what he did to them. Because I thought Marco had him on the ropes. Marco's TP was God just said. insanity. God said. This. Oh my god. Oh my god. But I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about DRX's aggression as well in this game because they had some paper wrecks looking rounds in this one. This one's going to be a bit of a delayed aggression almost, maybe because of this stun comes out here from Sadak. But as Sadak starts walking up, we're going to get the Oma flash out here. You're going to get some great movement by Buzz and it works a treat here as they're only on a save and only have one stinger and the rest on pistols. It was getting scrappy, a back and forth exchange. Gonna have to relinquish some of that control. Buzz actually on the dash out from the flash. What? Yeah, stacks follows Come up with on. a ghost. Is it another thrifty from DRX? They don't know when they're done. They don't know when they're beat. It doesn't matter the weaponry all the round. The loud's reaction, obviously, to the A main aggression is to just come and take B main and get towards this B site. And the thing is, the DRX players have to go and pick up guns as well. So it takes them, these guys who now have guns are even further away from where the action is. So they're kind of it's still in a bit of a, a tricky spot here, DRX. And you're going to see that play out because as Zest, you know, they're trying to just buy time here for each other, basically Zest and RB. But RB is now trapped alone in on the site. And the thing is, you will commonly see here in pro games, you know, I've got a player over here. Here, this guy will try to desperately save this guy's life and often what will happen in those situations is you both end up dying right sometimes and i love this decision by zest obby just has to play for his life and time as much as he can but zest is not in a position to help him here right he just has to sacrifice his teammates somewhat obby's just in there there's not much he can do and zest makes the right call here where he's only got a ghost you're not going to take on three players with a ghost here, right? Or even between you, a ghost and a sheriff, you're not going to take them on. So what ends up happening here is RB kind of gets stuck, you know, towards the back of the site. Zest obviously knows he can't really help too much in that scenario. RB does manage to get a dink here, but he will ultimately fall and the spike will go down here for loud. So we end up in this 4v3. But even though they don't have the best of guns here and we do actually end up in a 3v3, DRX managed to make it work. The low health on Aspas here helps a lot as Buzz just comes around down lane and gets a kill there. And they do manage to just about win this round. Here comes the cavalry. Here comes those rifles. The big boys have made it. High flash to facilitate. And look at the HP. Aspas is on two. He's standing guard. Kalanzine connects. And now a 3v3. Aspas going to try and readjust position, but the timing just passed. Check. Yes, he does. Aspas goes down. Flies in. No trade comes out. Held back by the smoke, by the seas. And now there's problems. It's all down to Kalanzine. He's on the back. Oh, he's gone down. Stacks. Pins him down! But now let's come to the attack side for DRX and we'll start with round number 18. And the first thing we have to understand is really Loud's comp because they're playing a pretty weird comp, right? We've got no Sentinel in here. Uh, we've got only a fade for information, right? We don't have kind of the KO extra bit of info that you get from KO. Uh, you do have an op here with Aspas, you know, so he can potentially hold down kind of your some part of the map, uh, which just helped for this round. Uh, but one thing that Loud were commonly doing, and we'll just run the round forward, uh, you know, to start with, because it's a bit of a, a slow start, just going back and forth. But Loud were commonly playing retake on this A site, and they found success playing retake. I mean, you know, you've got the Omen Flash, you've got the Fade stuff, you've got the Breach stuff, right? Uh, potentially even a Viper Orb here to, you know, smoke off the choke point, you know, consistently as well for that retake. And they found a lot of success doing it. But by this point in the game, you know, we're a couple rounds in here to the second half. You know, DRX have figured out, hey, they're playing retake A a lot. And then in this round, they have their KO ult, right? So they've got the KO ult and they're thinking, okay, we know that they want to play on retake A. And you can see here's another example of it again, where the A site is just completely clear. So you would think, well, do you use your KO ult to get in onto the site? Or do you use it to play in the post plant, right? We can take this site without the KO ult. And that's exactly what DRX do here, where you see they just wait to group up here in A main, and now they get ready to take the site, but they don't use their KO ult. And that is what's going to win them this round, as you will see. Because again, 
Loud's retake is going to be really good. You will see it in just a second. But in come DRX, they're going to manage to get that spike down. Loud now start to group up and start to come for this A retake. We've got RB on this lurk. But now we're about to get the pop of the KO ult here from Stacks in just a second. And that is going to be a massive problem for Loud. Because now they are all in position, but they have no utility. And so it's kind of impossible to do a retake when you have no utility especially in something like a 5v5 and you'll see even when they get the utility back it's very good right the prowlers are good the flash is good all of that but as you'll see this round does not go the way of loud and in the post plant stack's gonna pop the ult make it even harder on the way back in it's gonna buy a lot of time as well but allow loud to fully reinforce and set up potentially to explode on the back of that ult expiring and it is really only two towards the site currently this is a lot of strain on their shoulders. Stax is down at 37. Dependent on the support system coming on in, that late presence from Cat will have to be critical, but the time is starting to run low. If Loud one back in, they gotta go now, they gotta go fast, or they're gonna lose out in this Marco. one. And they have no idea. Marco not getting checked on, does eventually fall to Aspas. The spray and the brain are not gonna work out this time. Two is on the collection, but it's Zest who can't make it work, but the time, they've run too low on it. DRX gonna make it to 10. And then, of course, this game had to end with a crazy round as well. Round number 21, where in this one, Loud decide to take an idea from DRX and get pretty aggressive themselves. They're going to go for an early dash. They're going to Omen Flash this way. They're going to Breach Ult out here as well. Again, just playing retake on this A site. Unfortunately for them, DRX are far enough back that they don't get caught by this utility. We talked about the finances. Blade Storm available, but Rolling Thunder invested off the rip. He's Nothing going. on the other side. And they're, they're just running, they're making a dash towards the A site. So as Pansy says, the RX are going, you know, as you would, straight towards the A site. But you can see that because the spike was back here, they kind of missed the timing. Loud's reaction is very, very fast as well. And so by the time that they get to this site, Loud are all here, right? They're right there. And so as they start to come into the site, we're going to get a fast kind of, you know, attempt here at a retake. But DRX actually managed to kind of win the early fight out, as you'll see, and end up in a 4v3. Now, I'm just going to let it play through because, again, they're going to do this smoke that they were doing. You might have seen it in the round prior as well, uh, are loud, like kind of underneath hell just there. And, again, it's going to allow them to come and get in onto the site and make this, again, look like a very winnable situation, even from a 3v4. But then it's going to be RB in a 1v3 again. And guess what happens? DRX going on in. They have the players there. Here comes that bloodbath, though. Marco might want to shut that door. He can't keep him out for now, but the right fills can. Zest going to find less. And now they've got the site up towards Heavens 1, two towards Short. It's a 3v4, and the plant's going to go down. Yes, yeah, Stax is low, but does that even matter now? Buzz still standing. Static taking a step forward. Looking for the first couple of victims to find. He's got a step towards the site. That's big. Buzz still waits. Great shot from Salak. Looks towards Hell. No swing. Spots out Zest. Look towards the site. Finds Buzz. This is still very doable. Louder holding on. But it's RB, the final boss from DRX. He has been a god for this squad. And he might just be again. Oh, he's still got the turret. Tui's is screwed. And I think he knows it. Pops down the smoke. He's toying with it. Oh, three bullets. It's all he needed. Three bullets to seal it. DRX, god tier performance. And I'll be the hero again for DRX if it was in the else. final round of this series. Woo. Another 3K from him.